Agriculture contributes by up to 25% to Kenya's GDP. The mango, a fruit under the horticulture subsector, has numerous interests from various stakeholders. Back in 2016, the total area under mango was about 50,000 hectares, and by 2020, the acreage increased to over 63,000 hectares. In effect, the value of fruits sold grew from 11 billion shillings to over 15 billion shillings by the year 2020. This goes to show the importance that the fruit has for the economy and the stakeholders along the value chain who depend on it. The mango value chain is a very important crop and we have over 60% of this crop being grown by the small scale farmer. We estimate that uh, over 330,000 farmers they rely on this crop and um, this is the, their source of income and this is also a way of employment at that level. However, it is also estimated that another 3 million people they rely on this crop indirectly. Either they are doing the transportation or they are trading or they are carrying out other functions to support the value chain. Mango has potential for export that remains largely unexplored due to various factors attributed to phytosanitary standards and quality. Most of our fruits have been affected by the fruit flies, so making it a challenge to export. But that means cafes and other actors, especially the farmers, have to work very hard to create fruit fly free zones. It's the way we grow our mangoes. The orchards are not separate units where you can do proper management. Like in the coast, there are a lot of wild mango trees which serve as uh, ovens for the fruit flies. If you spray your trees and try to control in your farm, the neighbors are not doing it. So there's a lack of organization of the producers of mangoes into viable entities that sort of support the farmer with knowledge and inputs and market access is a major problem. Despite the uptake and value in generation of income, mango production in Kenya has had its fair share of challenges. One of the challenges hindering profitability are the high post-harvest losses, which are estimated to be between 40 to 50 percent. These losses translate to lost income for stakeholders, especially the smallholder farmers with limited resources. Post-harvest losses also have a negative footprint on the environment and contribute to unsustainability of our food systems. In this video, we will traverse through two Two of the mango producing counties in Kenya to understand the challenges and opportunities in the mango supply chain as we explore the different stages from pre-harvest, harvest, post-harvest, post -harvest, logistics, processing, wholesale, retail, export and also consumption. We will hear from different stakeholders in the sector on how they perceive the causes and drivers of post-harvest losses and what they consider effective interventions to reduce the losses. Currently, more than 90% of mangoes produced in Kenya are consumed fresh in the domestic market. As such, mangoes contribute significantly to intake of fresh fruit in Kenyan households. However, there is great potential of exporting the fruits to markets in Europe and Middle East, but this still remains very low. If we can pause a bit and put in some strategies to bring down the pest uh, preference and the pest uh, numbers, and especially to the crop that is being uh, exported, then uh, I think we'll still be able to continue exporting our crop. To us, the EU market is a very important market destination for our fruits and vegetables. And hence we expect that uh, with the little that we are already exporting to the Middle East, once now we are able now to have the crop ready and of a good quality, we can still be able to continue in exporting to the EU market. At production level, there are about 11 mango varieties in Kenya. But out of these 11, four are of commercial importance. These include Apple, Ngoe, Tommy Atkins and Kent mangoes, which are grown in diverse ecological zones. The leading counties in mango production, ranked by contribution to the total value and volume, are Makueni at 28%, Machakos at 22%, Kilifi at 15%, and Kwale at 8%. Farmers in Makueni and Embu have been reaping huge profits from this crop. Patrick Kathuli and Philip Chalo are farmers from Makueni County. By 1998, I had 98 grafted mangoes. I increased them at least up to 600 plants, but due to wrong planting in my farm, I reduced up to at least four, more than 400. In my farm, I have 10 varieties. So we mostly rely on the ones that have market like Hepu Mango, Tommy Hatikin, Kate, and Ngowe. The others like Fadaik, like Sabin, Harden, are for local markets. The trees can produce between 400 and 1,200, expecting to have a total number of at least 160,000 fruits. I found me people getting a lot of money from mangoes. And since I had to educate my children, I thought of having mangoes in my farm. 
and I planted them with large number. The least money that gets in my pocket is no less than 400,000. I started the mango farming in 02. I have 107, 150 trees which are all mature. One of the biggest challenges is to look for the market when the fruit are, fruits are almost ready. We find that no many buyers were coming around and they used to go to lower areas where mangoes were ready earlier than our place. But if the market is there, mango farming is, can bring a lot of money. One mango tree can give you more than a thousand fruits. Sell them at five shillings, that is five thousand times hundred trees, that's a lot of money. Crossing over to the central region, in Embo County, we meet Henry Gary, who has been growing mangoes for 38 years on a six-acre piece of land. When I was teaching, I was interested in agriculture, and I started farming the agricultural crops. Uh, we, I grew some oranges, some avocado plants, and later on, I switched over to the mango farming, which I started in 1984 and 85. I, the first time I planted 120 trees, but I've expanded the population of the trees. Now I have about 400 trees on this farm. The farm is not so big. The farm itself is, is, is six acres, but the, the, the portion occupied by mango trees is four and a half acres. And around 1990-91, we started selling the fruits for export mainly to Europe and the Middle East. We noticed that we aren't some fruits which are affected by an insect. The fruit flies were soon disturbing, so the loss was between 50 and 30 percent each year. And the fruits were not diminished. When you lose half of the crop, it was soon disturbing. My capacity has moved from about 40 tons per year to about 70 tons if I get the market. People have grown many trees and the market is not increasing at the same pace. So although we are losing mangoes, we are not losing mangoes because of fruit flies. We are losing mangoes because the buyers come late when the mangoes have ripened and, and fallen down. Unfortunately, with increased production, there has been an increase in losses. According to reports by the Kenya Agricultural Research Organization, CALRO, 40 to 50 percent of the mangoes produced in Kenya are either lost or wasted. Some level of loss is incurred at each stage of the supply chain. Mango is a seasonal fruit uh, where we have the peak season during the months of November to February. During this time, we have a lot of losses because there is a glut of a supply. So this causes a lot of losses. Over 25% of this crop is lost at the farm level as a result of pests and disease infestation of the fruit. We have not invested a lot in terms of uh, machines and other equipment that are required to do the harvesting of this crop. So some farmers would get onto the tree and they shake it. We may not also be growing the right varieties in the right place. At the market level, the contributing factor may also arise from the farm. Because when you harvest the mature crop, get into the market, it will also start rotting. There's a lot of bruising of this crop because of the way we do the handling of the crop, even when we are doing the transportation. We don't also handle this crop very well. We also keep these crops in the same place. Sometimes you also don't sort out the crop so that you can have the, the ones that are ripe on one side, the ones that are yet to ripe on the other side. At farm level, there are multiple causes and drivers of losses. We spoke to these mango farmers about the losses they incur and how they affect their yields, incomes and livelihoods. At the flowering stage, we have the shade off due to pottery medio. When the weather is not all that bad, the losses we expect are during the harvest season. Fruit fly is very active and when that is there, the market goes down even up to five shillings and sometimes even to three shillings. We are losing about 30 to 50 percent of fruits to the, due to damage in fruit flies. The major loss is in, in the early production during flowering and the fruit formation. This is caused by lack of proper spraying program. To curb some of these challenges, farmers are encouraged to implement good agronomic practices where they involve experts. The cost of operating the farm with a ECP program where we use the traps and the parasitoids is such that what I use per year is actually less than 10,000. I use little money on crop protection 
and with the resources that we are able to sell most of the fruits and get more money than we used to get. We used to have several chemical companies which used to come and train us. We managed to reduce the losses and they even attracted chemical companies to offer us chemicals on credit. Orchard management is critical in mango farming and kept orchards provide breeding sites for pests and diseases. On the other hand, pruning facilitated renewed plant vigor in readiness for fruiting. We had to start with the GAP good agricultural practices in the farm. That goes with the cleanliness of the farm, pruning and also spraying. When people go and spray for themselves, uh, first they don't identify where the pests are. I can say they get a higher loss of mangoes because uh, they don't do it correctly. In uh, spraying, you have to be very keen. When we had a common spray program, it is a time when mangoes were bringing us a lot of money. In 1998, the African Fruit Fly program was conceptualized as a result of requests from growers, farmer organizations, NGOs, private sector, national government that are involved in fruits and vegetable production in Africa. And they approached ECPE to help in developing a management methods that can help them produce quality fruits that are good both for domestic markets as well as export markets, especially that quarantine restriction had become a crucial issue in the export market uh, opportunities. Growers were basically used to cover spray application of pesticides to manage fruit flies. They were not aware of any other technology that was available to them. But through this program, we managed to introduce them to baiting technique. We managed to introduce them to the use of biopesticides and we managed to introduce them to the use of classical biological control. These methods allow you to grow your fruits without pesticide residues. You are all too familiar with the issue of maximum residue level and consumers being so sensitive to fruits or vegetables that are contaminated with pesticides. With this intervention, you don't need to worry about that because you are producing literally pesticide free fruits. One of the things that Rockefeller Foundation did at the initial phase was to promote uh, the, fruit fly, the fruit fly trap and when we did the impact evaluation among the many uh, interventions we did that was the most effective technology. We are very grateful to our manufacturers. We have um, the traps that are trapping the fruit flies and also that are addressing the pesticide that are addressing the mangoes in vivo. When the fruits are ripe and ready for the market, harvesting is the next step. At this stage, concerns regarding loss mitigation are primarily focused on mechanical injuries during harvest, post-harvest scheduling, delayed harvesting, and selective harvesting by different buyers. Some farmers deploy service providers to help reduce some of these losses. For example, Patrick engages services from a harvester, and here's how it works. <laughs> transportation each buyer and off taker comes in with their own demands for the fruits they want. Such requirements mean that some fruit also gets lost in the harvesting process.
Upon harvesting, transport logistics are critical while handling this fruit. In most cases, the traders double up as transporters to the market. Majority of these transporters load the fruit in open trucks, exposing the fruit to high mechanical injuries during transit. Some have adopted the use of crates or carton boxes to minimize mechanical injuries and associated losses. After transport, the mangoes arrive at the wholesale and retail markets. I buy mangoes around uh, 10,000 pieces at most. When you come to sell the 10,000 pieces, you find the market, the market is fluctuated, yeah? Then the prices will go down. When the farmer comes with 10,000 pieces, he will sell at 10 shillings. And yet I'm supposed to get my two shillings. I add on the transport, then I add on my profits. You can get that uh, most mangoes are rotten. Some are, uh, have gone bad, they're like juice. You have to sell, it, sell them at a loss. Like in, a, a, in this box, when the mangoes are rotten, you sell them at 200 shillings. And yet that box you bought like at uh, 600 shillings. That is our challenge. Most wholesale markets in Kenya lack proper storage facilities and therefore mangoes and other perishable produce that are not sold each day end up in garbage bins and landfills. There's an opportunity for introduction of cold storage facilities at these market locations where unsold fruits can be stored and kept fresh for longer. I maembe kitabo uifikishe sokoni huwa maembe mingi sana inaanguka chini na inaoza. Alafu tukifika sokoni inakuwa kwa sababu sasa traders na wakulima wote tuko sokoni maembe inakuwa mingi. Alafu tunakuwa na hasara. Kwa sababu naye sokoni tukikuja hakuna kitu kama cold storage na tena huko tugefaa tuwekewe pahali ya kukamua juice. I supply at retail markets, uh, retail shops, uh, that is supermarkets, and uh, the kind of mangoes that we require, uh, they must be clean uh, mangoes, and they must be spotless, and uh, at least they must be half ripe, because we require them to have some shelf life. So some of these logistics, for example, from transportation, uh, the levies are so huge, around uh, 30 or 40 percent. That means that your profit margins are, are, are less than maybe for what you expected. One of the companies in the export business is Kate Exporters. They've been in the business for over 10 years. They have mastered how to reduce losses to a minimum of 5%. This is how they do it. I started the supply mangoes way back in 1990 uh, from Malindi. I partnered with one of my partners and uh, we started this company called Kate in 2008. One, we have contracted these farmers from Meru, from uh, Makweni, from Machakos, and uh, Marquet. We go ourselves with our graders, we pick mangoes and we bring to our pack house. We grade them again and put them in the sizes that the clients want. We also have some specific suppliers or the market agents. We have about 10. We have been with them for the last 15 years. We sold uh, more than uh, 100,000 tons of mangoes. Because of the rejects that we have, we lose about 5% of the produce that we get from the farm. We have a team of uh, technical managers or agronomists in our company. Then these people, they go down to the farmers on the ground, then they help the farmers uh, to do things right. With the peak season of mangoes starting from December through to March, seasonality in mango farming contributes greatly to post-harvest losses. Considering that mango fruits ripen around the same time, this leads to an oversupply in the market during the peak harvest period. One of the research uh, we have conducted at the University of Nairobi is to address the problem of seasonality through uh, off-season flower induction or fruit induction. Uh, during the rest period, the, uh, the mango trees which would otherwise be dormant can actually flower in fruit and therefore we'll have an off-season fruit. So if we can do this and uh, you know we have fruit production all year round, then we will deal with the problem of uh, gluts during the high season, which is a driver or a cause of food, uh, mango uh, losses in the mango valley chain. Farmer cooperatives come to the rescue for farmers where they aggregate produce and this has provided a backstop for them. But how has it been for mango farmers and the off-takers? The cooperative has assisted us in uh, organizing farm training centers. In our area, we have several. That's where we go. We meet uh, chemical companies. They even in the monastery for free. And uh, there we also highlight our problems for mitigation. 
In Embu County, Karuruma Processors has been at the front line in supporting farmers, despite the cooperatives playing a critical role as off-takers and in creating off-farm employment opportunities, there are still losses that occur at this stage of the supply chain. Karumo Horticulture and Irrigation Processing Association has a membership of about 70 farmers who are mainly mango growers. And we have been having challenges in marketing of our mangoes. And that's why we thought of uh, valuation and processing. Mainly process mangoes in terms of drying and pulping. And from pulping, we are able to make jam uh, and various juices, mango leather, mango wine. The loss from the farm now has reduced from the 60% to about maybe 30%. Our farmers can produce at least 10 tons of mangoes per season. We can absorb between a ton and two tons from a farmer. The rest goes to the fresh market because we have got that linkage with uh, other markets who buy from us. We require very high quality of fruits, which are supplied to the centre. We do a lot of fetting, and it is only the farmers who have met our criteria of quality who supply the mangoes through the centre. But there is a silver lining for this cooperative. They are going a step further and working on an innovative model in partnership with the county government to introduce mango juice to the school feeding program. This way, the mangoes will have a ready market while addressing food and nutrition security for school-going children. Through this approach, production, value addition, market linkage and consumption are effectively integrated. Experts at the University of Nairobi, we have been able to come out with very quality production of fruits and other foods which are nutritional in value for consumption by not only our children but their family at large. A group of farmers in a place called Karuruma in Embu County where I've actually installed uh, these technologies from research, the cold rooms and the small scale processing equipment. With the cold storage, these farmers are able to aggregate their produce and uh, therefore uh, attain the quantity that is required by traders. And whatever is not sold, they are able to do value addition to process the, the, you know, the, fre the perishable fruit into shelf stable products, which then they can actually sell. And so we are working also with other partners to help these uh, farmer groups to connect with the market for their product. In Nairobi University, has been working with Karurumo horticultural farmers and they, they have really managed to train them on uh, processing. They are even able to dry, to, to dry their mangoes and they have also been linked to buyers. At the moment uh, the cooperative has 3,000 people. We aggregate mangoes from their farms and take them to a different market uh, segment. One segment that we normally take our mangoes to is the processing plants and others are you know export. We have uh, people who buy for export and also the retail market. Cumulatively, especially for the processing plant, at least we, we take about 450 uh, tons. Uh, the retail market, we could do something like about uh, 20 tons. At the end of the day, when you produce uh, mangoes, the, the export take the best. Now, the third best is taken by the processing plant, and you will find that there are those that have been left out by the, uh, the first two segments. So you will find some wastes because of either size or not uh, you know, mature and also some of them have maybe invested. Apart from initiatives by farmer groups to process their fruits, Makweni County government has been championing value addition by being at the forefront of constructing a state-of-the-art factory that buys farmers' produce while guaranteeing a market for them. Nevertheless, there are still losses at this level. We have a total of uh, 4.3 uh, million mango trees planted by uh, 180,000 farmers and the production uh, is over 280,000 metric tons. Kalamba Makweni uh, processing plant, it has been very helpful to the members uh, because before we used to have uh, a lot of wastes. Uh, we used to have something like about 50%, now it's down to about 20%. Uh, farmers were being uh, you know, uh, lied to by the, 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 the buyers because they could buy at about five shillings a kilo 
but now the, the plant you know, buys at 18 shillings a kilo, which means the farmer will, will get something between 15, 12 and 15 uh, shillings per kilo. According to research, one approach to prolong the mango shelf life is value addition, where the fresh fruits are processed as wet products such as juices, pulps for yogurt enrichment, mango wine and jam, and also dried products such as mango chutney, mango chips, mango rolls, among others. These products are destined for both the domestic and export markets. Our team at the University of Nairobi has developed several products from mango, shelf stable, safe products from mango. When mango fruit is in high supply, we can actually transform uh, you know, the perishable fruit into these shelf stable products thereby you know first of all you increase the shelf life and make them more accessible all year round while at the same time we are addressing the post harvest losses and of course the value of the the processed product is higher than when you sell the fresh mango fruit one such company in Kenya that deals with value addition of the mangoes into mango rolls and dried fruits is Sweet Tunda, which means sweet fruit. They have been in business for four years. They also incur challenges, which also lead to losses. From Eastern and Central, we focus on Embu, Meru, Makueni, Kitui, and also Machakos. Uh, we also have some parts of Moranga, where we source from, Itanga particularly. And uh, these farmers, we source from them apple variety, uh, Kent, Tomi, uh, some also have Ngoe, and we can also take um, Sabine. This particular processing site, we started in 2019. By the time we were getting the dry, it was off mango season. Then we got about 30 tons to process. Uh, in 2020, that significantly improved to 70 tons. And in 2021, we did 160 tons. This season, we are targeting 450 tons to be able to offtake from the eastern, central region, and these farmers particularly, some are Global Gap certified, uh, while some are simply contracted. Uh, we process fresh mango into dried mango, as well as uh, mango rolls. From the farm level, um, the areas of losses mostly happens when the product is not created. So we always endeavor to collect the fruits in crates to reduce the damage in terms of um, physical or mechanical damage to the fruit. But if they are not created, you are looking at a 10-15% loss because of mechanical damage and injury. But what happens is we do not reject that product. Any product that is still firm and good at the point of arrival, we use it for dried mango. And anything that has been a bit pressed or mushy is used for mango puree. When it comes to the processing area, at the point of receiving, depending on where the fruit is coming from, we can experience um, rejection ratio of 3 all the way to 15%. Uh, less than 5% is mostly from global gap farmers who have a clear criteria on how to cultivate their trees and maintain their trees. So you find that they have less pest and diseases, uh, while higher rejection ratios is experienced with farmers who are from uh, non-contracted or non-global gap farmers who do not have a particularly clear criteria on how to maintain their farms. So you find that the pest and disease ratio is much higher. So in the processing area, the loss that we actually experience is the loss of the peel and the seed that normally ranges between 45 to 50 percent. So the seed and the peel, we eliminate it from the process and normally we have an arrangement with a third party who uses them to actually uh, feed insects. In the drying process, the loss is water. We are trying to extract as much moisture from the product from a shelf life perspective and also trying to get the desired texture from a customer standpoint. And out of that, we get a yield of 6 to 8%. Uh, this particular season, it has been very, very low due to high water content, but normally we aim between 8 to 10% of yield. So the entire process being manual is also the business model to be able to provide as much employment as possible. And our team has been able to achieve a productivity of about a thousand kgs per person per day, the team you're seeing here. So this competes internationally with the South Africans who are at 700 and the Philippines who are at 1,000 as well. Cold storage is a key component for quality preservation and extension of the shelf life of these fruits. There are various low-cost options for smallholder farmers and traders that have been developed through research. Once we tried to have the mangoes in the charcoal cooler, and they, being in the, that charcoal they would stay for 18 days. Apart from these low-cost options owned by pharma groups, there are alternative cold storage technologies that are available to mango farmers and are operated on a pay-as-you-use model. An example of this is the off-grid solar freeze cold storage, a solar-powered technology introduced to Kenya by Socofresh, which beyond providing cold storage solutions, has gone a step further to provide market linkages for these farmers. Socofresh provides cooling and aggregation uh, for smallholder farmers. Uh, we provide that through a cold storage unit set up at Farmgate 
um, and we also bundle market guarantees. Our clients are mostly smallholder farmers. They use uh, our cold storage services to uh, increase uh, the longevity of mangoes, uh, to reduce field heat, which also increases their lifespan, and also to aggregate. So a lot of smallholder farmers produce anywhere between 100 kgs to 300 kgs, and it kind of helps to aggregate produce from multiple farmers, so you're able to take it to market in a cost-efficient way. We identify the best technology in the market and then make it accessible for smallholder farmers uh, by providing it what, as what we call a service or pay-as-you-go. Our, our fees are two shillings or two cents per kg and that makes it super affordable for the farmers. The other way we make it accessible for the farmers is we provide a market guarantee. So this little price that farmers need to pay is already catered in because we have connected them to markets. Um, and then the third is we're based at the village level. We're the only uh, cooling provider who makes it possible for smallholder farmers to directly access cooling. Um, as I mentioned, we're not a technology company. Uh, all the other providers out there provide the technology, which costs anywhere between uh, 200,000 shillings to 2,000, like $20,000, which is inaccessible to the farmer. And the small, produ the small products that are available in the market only store about one ton of produce. For us, what we do is we say, bring as much produce as you have, we will store as much as you want, and we will only charge you for what you use. Uh, we make ourselves uh, priced in such a way that we have the opportunity to serve hundreds of thousands of farmers. The other is we actually look at seasonality. So mango production happens in three to four months of the year, sometimes even two months if the season is, uh, is low. Um, and so we work with other value chains. Uh, we Our cold storage are portable, they can be put on the back of a, a truck uh, and moved to different locations. Um, so while there is no mango production in say Makweni, when it is mango season, um, when it is off mango season, we move that cold storage to areas such as avocados. Typically a farmer loses anywhere between 40 to 60 percent of the mangoes they produce. Um, and when we uh, bring in our solution of cooling and aggregation and market guarantee, uh, we're able to see, reduce that loss up to 5 percent. Um, because we are able to connect farmers to with great quality produce to exporters, with medium quality produce to the local market. To further probe opportunities in managing post-harvest losses, academic research has also been instrumental. This has been enhanced through strategic partnerships. Research has shown that actually that problem of jelly seed results from uh, uh, deficiency of calcium in fruit tissue. So you find that this, the flesh or the pulp around the seed is soggy and that contributes to losses. So what we've done is to optimize calcium nutrition as a way of managing jelly seed and uh, we have shown that if you balance calcium nutrition with the potassium and magnesium then you actually have uh, you address the problem of jelly seed with all these losses along the supply chain the question now begs what investment opportunities are low-hanging fruits for investors to tap into and what impact will this have on the horticulture subsector investing in the companies which are already sourcing uh, from farmers because if I'm sourcing from ex-farmers and you make more investments that I can improve my logistics for sourcing, I can have cold storage uh, units maybe even at the farm level, then there is a likelihood that I'm going to provide more market to the farmer. And they're here making an assumption that they're going to give the right price to the farmers. At the farm level, we are interested in also ensuring that the quality and the quality is also maintained. We can have simple technologies being promoted like the charcoal coolers at that level. So that if the farmer harvests the crop today, he can be able to store that uh, crop in that uh, form for, for it to be transported before it is transported to, to another area. I would propose that uh, we also have uh, very good uh, aggregation centers with all the facilities that would go towards again maintaining the quality of that crop. Farmers can come in, especially in the major mango growing areas, Makueni and the rest. In a world, you can have one aggregation center or two, depending on the produce. And we can have now the cold, cold, cold facilities at that level. For any investor coming to the county, uh, the investments that would really assist in the mango value chain, uh, one is uh, in nursery uh, production. At Makueni, we majorly depend on uh, seedlings from outside the county. 
uh, especially Muranga, uh, Thika, uh, JK Uart, that's where we get our seedlings. And then investors are coming and investing in the production of clean planting materials, seedlings uh, that will assist the sector. Number two uh, is in the line of, uh, of especially pest diseases, advising farmers to go for integrated pest management. Uh, instead of majorly uh, by chemicals or using chemicals only. And you know integrated pest management is, 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 is a big field. So any investor can come and in, uh, invest in one of those lines of integrated pest management and that can really assist the farmers. Post harvest losses for mango stands at 30 to 40 percent. Uh, support to agro-processing and the establishment of the uh, pest-free area we expect now the losses to come down to around 20 percent uh, and uh, uh, this will definitely be achieved because of the interventions and the support from the county government. Post harvest handling, if only we can have maybe coolers, uh, they, they can have uh, facilities to dry their mangoes when they are when they when the, the, there is over production on or when the the buyer is not there. If only they can be linked to a financier who is charging a lesser, lesser interest because the current financiers which are there, they are really charging a lot. And the available financiers are of course the banks. If only there can be somebody to subsidize on their inputs. The farmers will we will go to the next level without uh, difficulties. Going forward, there is need for intensive stakeholder collaboration. Each supply chain actor is critical in positioning this value chain towards addressing the inherent losses. We can actually uh, complement each other to reduce uh, post-harvest losses in the mango value chain and therefore uh, to ensure better returns for our farmers and other stakeholders in the mango business. We have seen a lot of impact in the post-harvest reduction. The fact that we have reduced loss by 20%, it means we have put more, more funds in the farmer's pocket. Some of them have uh, expanded their production. Some of them have uh, got money to uh, pay school fees for their children, take their, themselves to hospitals if they needed to. And some of them even did some rent houses, bringing in additional income uh, to their families. Through well-organized collaboration, it is expected that it will increase the yields for farmers and incomes for all the value chain actors.